when I studied history, I guess ending a year ago or more, I remember noticing that at a certain point it got to be okay to think that, you know, maybe the people who were supporting, you know, the unemployed are just lazy, you know, and I don't know if it's really surprising, but this didn't actually happen that long after we started helping them out at all. So for a lot of time, people who were unemployed were considered to just be, you know, not worth the effort. Then people actually started, you know, government started making an effort, and then people, you know, who had money and who didn't need to worry about being unemployed, decided maybe they, you know, deserve to be unemployed. I don't believe that there is such a thing as someone who is truly lazy. Maybe not everyone will work or can work all the time, but other than situations such as that you might have a really monotonous, possibly even dangerous, and really, you know, hard job that might really wear you out for, you know, in the 60s there were, there were, I think it was 50,000 here in Denmark that were unemployed and, you know, some people were saying, ah, oh, they don't want to work. A lot of these people had monotonous jobs, they might work in factories, industrial plants, where it was dangerous, where they worked 12 hours in a row, six days a week. I've never seen any evidence of someone truly being inactive or passive. I was engaged to a woman who never had a job. Well, once. And not for terribly long, I think. And she considered herself to be... She was a capitalist, and she considered herself to be too lazy. But, as I pointed out to her, she did a lot of other stuff. You know, if you don't work, you will do other activities. I've never met anyone, I've never heard of anyone, who was truly just completely unwilling to do anything. It was recently on the news here that there are people coming back to their former workplace after they retired. You know, they reached the retirement age and they wanted to work still because they were bored. They didn't want to just sit around and do nothing. Nobody wants to sit around and do nothing. For someone, if someone is unemployed, it might mean that they have trouble finding a job. Maybe they have trouble holding down a job. Maybe they have some kind of personal issues, emotional or otherwise, that you know, make it difficult for them to work. They need help and support, sometimes financial, sometimes just, you know, they need someone to talk to. But leaving them, you know, leaving them completely alone, not trying to help them in any way, is not going to help anyone or anything. Telling them, oh, you're just lazy, you don't want to work, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. They start to think that they actually are lazy. Don't even get me started on roles in society. So, the idea that these people should just be abandoned, that they're, you know, lost causes, or shouldn't be helped because they'll never actually get a job and will just be, you know, continuing to pay them. I think it has to do with the idea that a lot of capitalists like to tell themselves is true, i.e. that the most important and to some the only important motivating factor is profit, and this is complete crap. People work if you give them work. 
for a long time here in Denmark, it was deemed to be, you know, basically pointless if you worked or not, because the government would take care of you. People still worked. There wasn't a higher unemployment rate then than there was any other time. And it should be noted that the unemployment rate, there will always be a small percentage that are just unemployed. And this is partially because sometimes we count, you know, in these statistics, sometimes the people counted are just people going from one job to another. And of course, for a little while, they're unemployed, you know. There are various other reasons. I'm not going to go into them all here. Basically, the idea that profits are the only thing, you know, because obviously if you believe that, then you believe that giving someone money, if they don't work, means they won't ever work. It should also be noted that just creating some minor jobs and paying people some for that, that would attract people, that would get some of these people who are unemployed, that would get them into the work place, you know. There's a real bad tendency of working, moving jobs, you know, overseas and, and li eliminating them because, you know, otherwise we won't be making quite as much of a profit. Profit is not the only motivating factor. And when it is, bad things happen. If someone is supplying a service or creating a product and profit is the only motivator, then they're not necessarily going to do a good job. They're just going to make sure that it's cheap for them to do. They're going to make sure that they can make as much money with as little effort as possible. That is what happens when profit is the main motivator. Without regulations, without a certain amount of empathy, I like to say that anyone who creates a product or offers a service, if they can afford to make it good, then they should have to be subjected to it themselves before they pass it on to anyone else, before they try to sell it to anyone because this would help ensure that it would actually be good, you know, products or services. If capitalism doesn't exactly breed empathy, quite the opposite actually. It makes you think of everyone else as the enemy and yourself as the one, you know, person to be supposed to be benefiting from any of the work anyone does, basically. It makes the consumer a target. It makes you think of them as someone you just have to make sure to convince to get the product. It doesn't make them someone you have to please, because if you please them, then, you know, if you give them a product that lasts for a lifetime, then they won't buy something they won't buy that again, you know. So it should break every so often so that they come back and you'll know, say, oh, sorry, it broke. Here's another one. Same exact thing. It'll break in a while and then you'll be back, you know. Without regulations, this is what happens if profits are considered to be the one. And that is, once again, where the idea of roles enters. When you tell someone that they only care about profits, then they eventually think that they only care about profits. And this does not lead to good people. This leads to selfish, very unpleasant individuals who think of everything around them as either something for them to just play with and take advantage of, or something to destroy so that they can be making. It doesn't encourage making good products, because if you're a big company, 
making a lousy product and a small company comes along making a superior product and selling it at a cheaper price or just selling at the same price but it's a superior product then you're more likely to destroy them crush them with your superior power because you've been around for longer you have more money this does not benefit the consumer which is what the capitalists are always saying the whole point of it is you know it's all for the consumer it is it leads to innovation it makes sure that you know everything you know it's only the best products that survive no it means that the ruthless survive it means that the ruthless strive not sure that made entire sense but didn't Danish it makes the people who have a good idea easy targets unless they are as ruthless and there we have the vicious circle you don't have to be making a good product if you can just convince people to buy your crap and this is surprisingly easy depressingly easy with advertisements advertisements are basically legitimate lies that convince people that this particular product is what they should get. A lot of advertisements today don't even have anything to do with the product they're selling. They're just trying to appeal to you in some way, usually lowest common denominator, and make sure you remember the name. I read once that subliminal marketing was actually outlawed, then how come I continue to see it everywhere? And I suppose that's it for this video.